Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited today to be showing you guys how to draw a portrait with graphite pencils. First, I'm going to walk you through six easy steps to get you started. Then I'll go over some tips and tricks I've learned along the way so you can start creating your own custom portraits. All the materials I use for this project will be listed in the description box below. Step one, you're gonna need a really good sketch outline. There are a couple different ways you could go about getting this. I do actually have a video that goes more in depth about different methods for getting your sketch outline and I'll be sure to leave a link to that. But if you're a beginner, I actually would really recommend you trace. This will give you an accurate sketch outline and an opportunity to learn techniques and skills that if you get so frustrated with the actual outline process, you would not otherwise get a chance to learn. Next, you'll want to go ahead and lighten your sketch outline. This will help with realism because you won't have those sketch outlines shining through and creating kind of an animated feel. Step three, you're gonna to wanna to start layering on pencil. Now I like to start with the shadowed areas first, just so I don't lose the lines for those as you start to build up the graphite on the paper. Now there are two primary ways to use your pencil. The first is for shading, and the second is for detail. Shading would be anywhere that you want a smooth surface, such as the skin. To get smooth shading, you'll hold your pencil as far back as you can and use very light pressure with sweeping motions back and forth. This will minimize lines and allow you to cover a very even area. An example of detail work would be something like hair or outlining where you want sharp, crisp edges. To do this, you'll hold your pencil closer to the tip and apply more pressure and be very direct with your lines. Step number three is blending. You're gonna to wanna to do this between layers to get rid of pencil marks and create nice even gradients between light and dark areas. There are lots of different ways to blend. You can use a tissue, you can use Q-tips, you can use a blending stump, also called a tortillion, or you can always use dry paint brushes. Sometimes I like to use my blending stumps as drawing tools themselves and use them to actually deposit graphite onto the paper. Step five, we're gonna start using our erasers to pull up highlights to really bring out the contrast between light and dark areas. The Tompo Mono Eraser is really nice for those really fine, small details and a kneaded eraser is perfect for gradient areas where you want a nice smooth transition. For the sixth and last step, you wanna make all of your darks even darker. This is going to make things that are far away look further, it'll make your image look more three-dimensional and more realistic. This is because of contrast. And now for some additional tips that I have learned by making all the mistakes for you. So my first tip I actually mentioned earlier, which is start with your darkest areas first. This is gonna help prevent you from losing your outline. And it's also going to help you judge your mid-tone values and how dark those should be. My next tip is gonna sound like common sense, but we're gonna talk about it anyway. It's patience. When working with graphite pencils, you wanna use lots of layers to slowly build up to the value you want. If you rush, you run the risk of damaging your paper and you probably won't get the effect you're going for in your final product. Try to let this be a therapeutic part of the process. You don't wanna rush through it or feel like you're just trying to get it done. This piece took me approximately 17 hours to do. This next tip is something I do to keep myself from getting overwhelmed. You'll notice that I've broken down this piece into several sections. By doing this, it's not this huge overwhelming, there's no way I could do that. You can just look at one specific small area 
and take it one step at a time. This makes it much less daunting of a task, and it also seems much more attainable. This next tip is geared more towards realism, and it's to follow your reference image very closely. Even if what you're drawing does not make sense, these small details play a very important part in your overall image. You may not understand a shadow shape when you have your nose up against it, but when you take a step back, your brain puts all those small things together to form a picture that cognitively you can understand. A good example of this is optical illusions. Your brain takes shortcuts and kind of autofills a lot of information so that we can process more information more quickly. Another really good example of this is typoglycemia. This is a cognitive process involved in reading and is how we can still read a sentence even when it's just made of numbers. This next tip starts where the last left off, which is step back from your work as frequently as you can. Sometimes I find it helpful to take a picture of my artwork, go to another room, and look at it with a little more perspective as a picture on a phone. Sometimes it is also helpful to just take a break. If you've been putting in hours and hours and hours on a piece and you're past the point of having momentum, sometimes you just end up endlessly working on one spot and not being able to move forward from that point. Once you think you're done, go back and make all of your shadows darker. The difference between light and dark areas is what we call contrast, and it is extremely important, especially if you want something to look more realistic or more three-dimensional. If you make a shadow darker, that area will look further back or more sunken in. This is extremely helpful to make eye areas look more three-dimensional. For example, if you drew a circle on a piece of paper, it would look very flat. If you started to shade it and create darker areas and lighter areas, it would start to look like a round ball that was sitting on top of the paper. So while doing this piece to achieve a higher level of contrast, I did use all the way from an H pencil to a 7B graphite pencil. But I also included a Faber-Castell Polychromos black colored pencil. And just from my experience, I've found that the Faber-Castell black colored pencil works better than, say, like a Prisma colored pencil. This, I believe, has to do with the fact that the Faber-Castell colored pencils are oil-based and the Prismacolor are wax-based. From my experience, the wax-based pencils seem to slide off the top of the graphite, but the oil-based pencils seem to play a lot nicer with the graphite. There are several places in this piece, like the glasses and the collar of the shirt and the sleeves, where it is absolutely black in the reference photo. And those, since they do have sharp edges anyway, I did go ahead and press pretty hard with my pencil to burnish and fill the whole tooth of that paper so it could be a nice clean black color. However, you wouldn't want to do this if your black areas transition to light areas gradually and didn't have sharp edges. This is because it would be difficult to hide that sharp line and make the change appear seamless. It can be fun when you're doing projects like this to play around with different techniques to make different textures. Like the body of this shirt, I ended up doing lots of little circular motions and I didn't worry too heavily about blending them out because I wanted to keep that knit texture. Then I went in with the Tombow Mono Eraser and made lots of small dots to really exaggerate the texture even more by increasing the contrast between the light and dark areas. Now don't toil too long over all the little details. There will always be something you wish you could work a little more on or change about any piece you do. At some point, you just gotta put your pencil down and say, it's done. Once I am done, I like to clean up all the edges and outskirts of the paper to make sure that no smudges are still hanging around. Once that's done, I sign my art and spray with a final fixative to prevent any smudges or damage to the piece.
I hope y'all liked this video today. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you are on Instagram, I would love to be tagged in any artwork that you guys create. Why does it take so long to get to the end of the alphabet? Because there's a Q in the middle.